this tiny speck right here is our sun orbiting around Sagittarius A, the black hole in the center of the Milky Way. Now, have you ever wondered how long it takes for our sun to complete one orbit? Well, today you're going to find out. Welcome to What the Math. Hello guys and welcome back to What The Math. Today I decided to talk a little bit about galactic year. Basically, the time it takes for the sun, let me zoom out of here, for the sun to complete one complete orbit around the black hole in the middle. Now this is something that is used in astronomy sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And today we're going to talk about that particular unit of time measurement. Also, we're going to recreate our solar system yet again. Uh, to make it look as realistic as possible using this particular simulation of galaxies. And um, we're just going to talk about various um, important dates in relation to galactic year. So let's start by recreating our system. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I did this in a previous video as well. So I'm going to slow this down first of all, actually. I'm going to go, let's just go days per second. I think it's a little bit more easier to manage if we just do that. And as you can see, everything is suddenly slow. And we're going to take Mercury. Actually, let's take Earth because I know how far away Earth is from the sun. And put it at the, a distance of approximately 1 AU. doesn't have to be exact. So 1 AU is around here. And here we go. And I, I want to make sure that it's kind of perpendicular-ish to, uh, to the sun. So to do that, what I need to do is I go into Earth's motion and i look at inclination change this to let's just say approximately 85 degrees because that's a, that's where it is it's not exactly 90 but it's about 85 but it has to be in uh, relation to the black hole so i'm gonna look at my black hole look at the earth i cannot see earth very well so yes i have to move my um right oh sorry not the right of ascension mean anomaly no, not mean anomaly. Right of ascension. That's, that was the right word. There we go. Right of ascension has to line up with the black hole. Uh, so here we go. That's better. Excellent. That looks good enough. So now, if I start this, my Earth is going to be spinning around Sun just in this fashion. Perfect. Excellent. So now we can add other planets. We know where the Earth is. We know that Venus is a little bit closer to the Sun. Venus is going to be somewhere over here. Mercury is going to be a little bit closer. Mars is going to be a little bit farther away. And then we have Jupiter, around 3-ish AU. Saturn, Uranus, and let's finish at Neptune. Now, you can actually add the, the whole system if you want with every single um, satellite and so on by pressing this button right here. But I don't want to slow down my game, so I'm not going to do that. And here, what you need to do is go into each individual planet now and change its uh, inclination to 90 so that it actually gets in a position around the sun. And then you have to actually, once again, adjust the right of ascension and you can just copy that from Earth. And here's the last one. So we're gonna enter 85 inclination and ascension of, erase all of this, 65 degrees. So now if I start a simulation, it should kind of look more realistic. I don't know if you can see it because I think I disabled the trails. Here we go. And now we can see the beautiful trails dancing around the sun in a perpendicular motion to the black hole. Wow, this is so bright. Holy cow. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about galactic year now. So as we're watching this procession. So how long is the galactic year? Well, it takes our Earth approximately 230 million years to uh to or i guess our sun uh, to orbit around um sagittarius a which is right there now that's a very very long time and it does uh change a little bit depending on you know where our sun uh flies through because unlike planets which orbit in a relatively sort of stable uh, elliptical orbit um stars don't have that they actually don't go in a straight line they sort of wobble a lot they go left right they go up and down so they actually kind of looks like this they they move around a lot up down left right and so on and so forth uh not as fast obviously but depending on where they're passing i should probably control z this because i just moved my sun a little bit 
uh, depending on where they're passing, depending on where they're actually um, going through. Uh, so in certain regions of space, especially if there's a high concentration of like these solar clusters right here, or if there's dark matter uh, um, clusters, which are invisible, obviously, the sun's or the star's pathway will actually change. So uh, the solar, uh, not solar, sorry, um, galactic year can actually deviate. But it's approximately 230 million years, plus minus, I just say 30 million years. And um, so essentially last galactic year, or essentially 230 million years ago, was when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Essentially one year ago, dinosaurs were here. I just used the word essentially three times because that's how essential it is. Anyway, so yes, a year ago, dinosaurs were roaming our planet. Uh, but that's also when something called Permian Triassic extinction event occurred, which was basically when a lot of various animals and plants died out because something happened. We don't really know exactly what happened, but something happened. Now let's use this galactic year to talk about some other important dates. We're going to start with, uh, I guess, the Big Bang. And this was 61 galactic years ago. Um, our our gal galaxy, the Milky Way, was born or was created approximately 54 galactic years ago. So all of this was made about 54 galactic years ago. The Sun was created after supernova about 18.4 galactic years ago. Then about 15 years ago, uh, the life began on our planet. So if we go to Earth, 15 galactic years ago or 15 revol revolutions around Sagittarius A, that is when the life came to exist here. And it took a lot of a lot of galactic years for multicellular life to appear because it only appeared about seven galactic years ago. In other words, for eight galactic years, for a very long time, life on this planet was unicellular and it basically consisted of just one cell or uh, different types of one cell. Then approximately three galactic years ago, life just exploded and started to uh, become very diverse. This is something we called uh, Cambrian explosion when suddenly there were so many different types of life, so many different types of organisms on, on this planet. And this is when things got really interesting. And about two galactic years ago, that's when the first dinosaurs appeared. Uh, and obviously 0 0.26, uh, 0 0.26 galactic years ago is when the last dinosaur disappeared. And the humans appeared on this planet only about 0.001 or 0.1% of a galactic year. In other words, we're a very recent addition to this planet. All right, so that's basically the history. Now let's talk about the future. What will happen one galactic year from now? Well, what will happen is that all of these continents that you see, unfortunately, we cannot simulate this in the game, but all of these continents will actually merge into one supercontinent. There are some names that have been proposed for this. Uh, some people think, say it's going to be called Amasia. Some people say it's going to, it's going to be called Nova Pangea. Or some people will actually refer to it as Pangea Ultima. So there's some cool names, but basically all of these continents will merge into one mega continent. Then, about four galactic years from now, uh, the level of carbon dioxide um, is going to be at the point where we're not going to be able to have any more um, photosynthesis. In other words, plants and uh, bacteria that use um, a CO2 or carbon dioxide for, for, you know, for breathing will not be able to do so anymore because there's just not going to be enough CO2 left, which is obviously the opposite of, of a problem that we have right now. But because of that, in four galactic years, most of the multicellular life will probably die, unfortunately. Now, in 12 galactic years from now, the magnetic field that you see right here is going to shut down. And what this will do to us is unfortunately also not very good. So uh, a lot of the atmosphere will get stripped by the solar radiation. Not all of it, but a lot of it will actually get stripped and um, our surface will get irradiated by huge amounts of radiation. So any life that's left here will most likely um, die out and a lot of the surface will become um, highly irradiated and also change in composition as well because many things on the surface right now are protected from radiation but if you radiate uh, all of this stuff on the surface it's going to change into different materials in other words our earth is going to look a little bit more like this guy right here like mars we may actually see this in the future on our planet and obviously the water will be gone as well but on the other hand, about 15 galactic years from now, um, the surface of our planet is actually going to look a little bit more like Venus. So in other words, um, three galactic years after we lose our atmosphere, we actually are going to turn into Venus because 
for one, our sun is going to start expanding and produce a lot more heat, but also um, the carbon dioxide that is present in the soil will get released into the atmosphere and uh, get so thick that we'll, we'll get uh, progressively more and more hot until we reach temperatures of anywhere uh, from 400 to 600 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be ridiculously hot, it's going to have really high pressure and possibly very acidic atmosphere as well. So this is possibly our future after returning to Mars. And then 22 years later, 22 galactic years later, so 22 galactic years later, this is what's going to happen. Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies are going to merge and create Milk Dromeda or Milk Comeda or you know what I mean, the one super galaxy. And at this, at the same time, we actually may also attract some other galaxies in the vicinity and create an even bigger uh, galaxy, which will be essentially a mega galaxy in our galactic cluster. Now this will happen 22 galactic years from now and three galactic years later, or in other words, 25 galactic years from now, our sun will have uh, undergone, you actually didn't see this because it's really hard to see it here, but our sun will undergo a nova, not a supernova, but just a nova when it actually just releases the um, layer above it. So I'm gonna try to play this again. So here we go, this is a solar evolution. It's going to release its upper layer, uh, undergo a nova and become a white dwarf. And here you go, you missed it again. Anyway, it's going to become a teeny tiny little white dwarf that you see right here. It's only about uh, 11 kilometers in size. It's going to be a lot less massive than this. It's going to be approximately uh, 70 to maybe 60% mass of the sun. And it's going to stay a white dwarf for a really, 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 really long time. Um, all of the white dwarfs that are currently in existence, they have been in existence since the beginning of the universe. So they are pretty old objects. And finally, in about 500 galactic years from now, we will no longer see any other galaxies except for the ones in, in the local uh, vicinity to us. In other words, uh, only the local group to our Milky Way galaxy will be visible in our sky. Everything else will actually disappear forever because it's going to, or a lot of the galaxies will actually reach something called cosmic light horizon. Now, this is a topic I'm gonna cover in one of the future videos, uh, but what it refers to is the idea of um, uh, objects in space because of the expansion of the universe reaching a point where the um, the light would have to travel longer than the age of the universe to reach us so we never get to see those objects so in other words there are objects in the universe right now that we actually still haven't seen because the light from them hasn't reached us and this is beyond cosmic light horizon but because our universe is expanding a lot of these objects uh, especially the ones in other galaxies, will actually reach that horizon. So in the future, we will not be able to see them anymore. They're just, there's going to be just darkness for us to see. So, you know, enjoy those galaxies while you can see them because they soon will become invisible. And by soon, I mean 500 galactic years, which of course is approximately 115 billion years from now. So it's quite, quite a long time, but at some point we will not see anything. And this is the essence of galactic frame and basically how astronomers measure large amounts of time. Hopefully this was clear, hopefully now you know a little bit more about astronomy and astrophysics and hopefully you learned something from this video. Thank you guys for watching, if you enjoyed this video like this video and also subscribe to my channel. Check out some of the other Universe Unbox 2 videos. Also check out some of the other games like Kerbal Space Program or the History of Space Program that I started very recently. And also check out some of the other games that I play, those that I usually use in class or games that can teach you a lot of things about life, universe and everything else. Hopefully you'll stick around the channel and see you soon. Game you later. Bye bye.